In this video, we'll use Lobotow's rule to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 3 over x to the x. First, let's begin by analyzing the form of the expression. As x becomes large, this term here, 3 over x, will go to 0. The base of the exponential expression that we're seeing will go to 1, and then the power, the exponent, is going to infinity. So this is of the form 1 to the infinity. I put that in quotes because this isn't a very helpful uh, calculation we've done here. In fact, this is an indeterminate form. It's far from clear what the answer actually is. On the one hand, if I was just to think about the base here getting closer and closer to 1, I might expect its powers to be getting close to 1. On the other hand, looking at this growing exponent makes me think that perhaps the expression will go to infinity. And the truth can be anywhere in between. We're going to use Lobato's rule to calculate this limit I'm going to call it L, and instead of calculating it directly, I'm going to calculate the logarithm of L. So I'm going to take ln, the natural log of L, and apply that to the limit. And it turns out that doing this will turn this exponential form, 1 to the infinity, into a product, and then we can get it into a form that Lobato's rule will uh, be applied to. Now, because the logarithm is a continuous function, I'm allowed to bring that ln inside the log. So the log of the limit is the limit of the logarithm of that expression. And again, that's because the log is a continuous function. One of the properties of logarithms allows me to take the exponent x inside the log and bring it out as a factor. So this becomes x times the log of 1 plus 3 over x. Let's just consider the form of the expression in this new uh, way of writing it. x is going to infinity, so this, this factor is going to infinity. And then 1 plus 3 over x is going to 1, and so log of 1 is going to 0. And so what we see is something that now is a product, infinity times 0, and that's still an indeterminate form. It's not clear what's happening. One factor is growing, the other factor is shrinking, what happens is very unclear. It depends on how fast they're each approaching their individual limits to what the final answer will be. Lobato's rule can be applied only if we get this into a fractional form, if I see 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And one way to make that happen here is to take that x, and instead of multiplying it, I'm going to divide by its reciprocal. These are equivalent expressions. And now what happens is this is going to 0 up top, and as x becomes large, the denominator now is going to 0 as well, and I see a form of 0 over 0. Lobato's rule can be applied to that form. Let's carry that out now. Lobato's says that I should take the derivative of the numerator and divide by the derivative of the denominator. In the numerator, I need to use the chain rule, so it's going to be 1 over the expression inside the logarithm times the derivative of that expression 1 plus 3 over x. In the denominator, I'm differentiating x to the minus 1. So using the power rule, this will be minus 1 over x squared. Let's finish the calculation. The derivative of 1 plus 3 over x, just differentiating that 3 over x, just like the denominator, will be minus 3 over x squared. And in fact, this expression here in the brackets is three times as much of the expression in the denominator. They will cancel, leaving behind a factor of three. And so doing that canceling, we'll get one over one plus three over x times three. We now reassess the situation. The limit is taking x to infinity. This denominator term will go to zero, so I'll be left with one, or sorry, three in the numerator, and then one plus zero in the denominator, and that is no longer indeterminate that is equal to 3. Keep in mind, we calculated the log of L, and I was interested in L itself. So what we've concluded here is that the log of L is 3. To find L, I need to exponentiate that answer, e to the log of L. And in this case, that's e to the third power, so e cubed is the limit that we were interested in. What I'm going to do is calculate the limit as x approaches 0 to the right of the exact same function. So nothing else has changed here. We're just changing uh, where we're taking the limit. 
Let's analyze the form now as x goes to 0 from the right. This term here will go to infinity. And so this base now will go to an infinity while the exponent will go to 0. And so the form of this is infinity to the 0. That's an indeterminate form again. We're going to go through the same kind of calculation. I'm going to let L be the limit that I'm interested in. I'm going to take the log of L. That means I can take that power down, that x down, and I'll have x times the log. Let's reassess the form. This factor is going to 0. This factor here will be taking the log of a larger and larger number, and the logarithm is a growing function, so this will go to infinity. So this is 0 times infinity, still indeterminate. Let's do the same trick we did a moment ago and turn it into a ratio of uh, two expressions. Now as x goes to infinity, what's going to be, or x goes to zero, I'm going to see infinity over infinity now. And that's an, a situation for which L'Hopital's rule applies. We do the exact same calculation. We take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. This is what we wound up with, 3 over 1 plus 3 over x. Same, same steps that we did in the previous slide. And now I let x go to zero. What happens is that this term here will go to infinity and I will see a denominator that's increasing. We'll see 3 over something getting large and this is no longer an indeterminate form. If I have something getting close to 3, the denominator increasing in size, that ratio will decrease in size towards 0, so the limit will be 0. Don't forget though that this is the log of the limit we're interested in. This means the limit we really wanted, L itself, is e to that value, so e to the 0, and in this effect, giving us equal to 1. We can conclude, just by drawing the graph of this function that we were taking the limit of, here is what it looks like. As x goes to infinity, our first limit told us that it was going to e cubed, so we're seeing an asymptote here. And as x goes to 0 from the right, we saw that it got closer and closer to e to the 0, or 1, and we're going to see a graph that grows towards that asymptote. So here's a horizontal asymptote, and there's a removable discontinuity right here. Notice that the function's not defined at 0, so there's really a hole in the graph there at x equal to 0.